Hey guys, how's it going? I'm the Duke of Italy, favorite lo-fi music YouTuber. And let me just adjust my lamp real quick so you can see my eyes. You're probably wondering what the heck I'm doing with corpse paint on, uh, or at least a war metal version of corpse paint. And you still can't see my face. There we go. I'm not trying to be too cold yet. I have a show tonight actually with my band, uh, my band Fallacy. Uh, on, check us out on Instagram at P-H-A-L-I-C-Y underscore X. Super awesome stuff. You know, we're having a great time. Um, really freaking grisly sort of black and grind core is kind of the thing we're going with right now. But, you know, we're, we're always evolving our style. So I'm dressed up for that right now. But uh, I, I thought I would get a video out while I have this on because it would it was appropriate. And uh, also the corpse paint looks pretty fun on camera. You know, it just kind of absorbs all this black. So it's actually rather fun looking. Uh, I know some of you are going to be like, oh, your hair doesn't match. You know, it's too short. Um, I'm growing it out. I'll grow it out a little longer. It's not going to be super long, but who honestly cares? Today... Today, we are covering a chart. Uh, no, this is not the Dungeon Synth chart, uh, but this is a chart. If any chart could get me canceled, it's this one. And I'm going to say straight up right now, I humbly request that you only support one of the bands we talk about today, um, as far as I can tell, as far as I can confirm. Because as far as I can tell, most of these bands are NSBM bands. Or associated with them except for one and we'll, we'll get into them but today we're covering a chart that was really popular on Mew last year uh, right around the time of nothing but black metal November it was just a nine little square chart really bizarre looking thing and it got spammed everywhere and people were seriously like what the heck is this what even are these um, this is probably the most cult chart I'm gonna cover for a long time I don't cover a lot of black metal charts anymore because uh, I covered the main one uh, two years ago at this point and and black metal is something I cover um, more along the lines of nothing but black metal November or my October content which I'm doing right now so this isn't something I'm gonna be doing year-round maybe I'll cover a classic album in December as I tend to do sometimes but you guys know uh, black metal holds a very special place in my heart so you know today we're covering the anime riff chart now you're probably wondering what the heck that means no it is not vocaloid it is not at all vocaloid it's more like this really weird style of black metal, particularly raw black metal for most of this, popularized mainly by NSBM bands, and yet some California bands have the same sound, because really, it's pop punk riffs, but played in black metal, uh, like the whole tremolo, fuzz guitar, raw production, you know, so it's like major chords, mainly. Um, does this sound unappealing to you? I mean, it might, but... At the same time, a lot of these bands incorporating so many different chords and scales uh, really makes for a really eclectic release, really makes for a really cool sounding release. So if you want to stream this stuff on like YouTube where the band isn't involved or anything like that, or buy like a bootleg or buy from a local uh, provider for you, uh, I kind of encourage that because, you know, you don't want to spread this band's message or, or most of these bands messages rather, but I can't deny the uh, quality of some of these projects. They're not all good. Some of them suck. And we're going to get into that today. But, you know, let's let's just uh, start real slow. So first, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of skip around the chart a little bit. There's one band that has three different albums on here. And one of them gets disqualified. And it's literally the last thing on the chart here. So this is the band Eisenwinter. And I was going to cover all three albums in a row, even though they're out of order. But this is Army der Erischen und Toten. Uh, super hard to find. The most recent Eisenwinter release on this chart. Um, I couldn't find any of this stuff except for one song called... Sailor Moon. Yes, Sailor Moon. Um, I doubt it has any connection to the actual anime, but it's kind of neat. It's kind of hilarious. But Eyes in Winter is an NSBM band, so I request that you don't buy from them directly. But these riffs are kind of hilarious. Uh, I will say the song Sailor Moon is really good. The riffs are crazy good. But I'm going to give you a little a spiel on uh, Eisenwinter's style right now because it's kind of remarkable. Eisenwinter has very few albums that go past the 20 minute mark. And I'm talking full length releases here, not demos, not EPs, full length albums, 18 minutes, 11 minutes, ridiculously short lengths that really shouldn't be there. And also shorter songs. You know, it's quite common to see two minute, three minute songs. I think like a four minute would feel like very epic for this style. In congruence with the rest of the chart, you're not getting any ambient sound. You're not getting any dungeon synth. If you're getting symphonic elements, they're very minimal. I disqualify this one, and we're going to talk about another one real quick. And we're talking about the uh, second one we're talking about today, which is the uh, second from the first one, because I want to end it on a good note. So this is, uh, hold on, let me pronounce this here. Antiton Zoom Ferriken? I 
sang German a little bit in high school. But this is a 2004 demo. And I will say this is not Eisenwinter's best material for sure. It's bright. It's super raw. It's either very low amounts of bass or no bass. But it's ice cold as well. There are some little bits of symphonic action here and there, uh, which actually kind of makes it fun. With the uh, pop punk sort of stylings of the riff, it sounds kind of fun. I will say these vocals are particularly bad. The vocals literally sound like the munchkins from Wizard of Oz, and I'm not joking on this album. This is not a consistent thing for Eisenwinter, but he always has that like goblin-y, very nasal type of growl sound that is honestly freaking hilarious. It's not the best sound in the book. It's not the best sound at all, but this does make for a perfectly entertaining listen but i will say though the riffs are very colorful on this release um, i'm not getting the triumphant feeling that obviously eisenwinter is going for here but i don't hate this one that much i give this one an okay because the reasons you enjoy it are not really the reasons you're supposed to enjoy it which is common with a lot of nspm out there i'm noticing like the lighting on my face like if my if my eyes are like not super open it looks kind of like i have no eyes and you know what would a terrible chart be without a third album by the same band this is eisenwinter's uh, earliest album on this list. This is um, Verkommen, Verkommen, Entarkt und Verrekt. Yeah, whatever that means. I feel like just saying these titles is going to get me barred from entering Germany. I feel like they're probably something like so utterly offensive. But this is a full-length LP. It's less than 20 minutes long, and the riffs are straight up epic on this time. If you were waiting for the deviation from pop punk uh, directly and only major chords, here, you absolutely get it. Instead, you get like this, this soaring collaboration of different scales and really interesting melodies, kind of along the idea of like what Forrest was doing uh, on the, that one album of Forrest that I talked about all the freaking time, um, Hammer Falls or whatever the heck. I think it's probably like the first song on that album, actually. It's in Russian, so I don't really remember the title that much. The vocals are frog-like stuff, you know, Dagon from Inquisition, Abbott from Immortal, uh, but honestly, a little bit worse. Um, Kind of funny stuff, but like it's so croaky and the chords are so well placed that it kind of works. It comes across as cult, finally. Now this one is more snowy feeling and very combat oriented. In a way, it's kind of like if you described Immortal to someone, this is this is almost like the way you'd describe Immortal, but it doesn't sound at all like the same. Uh, Immortal has those big 16 bar uh, riffs that are just those huge sweeping like thrash metal influence stuff. But Eisenwinter is a lot more of like the, um, it's, it's a lot more Dark Throne but with brighter melodies for sure. It's a, a bit cheesy still, but it is way more fun. Vocals are way better, and the atmosphere actually sets in on a few of these tracks. You do feel the tr sort of triumphant vibes he's going for here. Hopefully not for the same subject matter. I mean, hopefully you're focusing on something a little more important in your life than uh, people of color, I guess. But you know what? I mean, it, it, the feeling translates. You know, you can tell he feels what he's saying. Not that you should support that at all. It's also very punky feeling, which is the thing that uh, NSBM bands kind of have excelled at, honestly. The whole hooligan black metal type thing is that it really gives this huge dosage of like punk, not like the nature of like American punk, but like a, if a similar vibe of like that huge amount of angst. And it's like, how do you even feel like that? Well, I guess 2021 could make you pretty upset or 2022. Gosh, time flies. But yeah, this Eyes and Winter album is kind of great. Super short, but it's kind of gimmicky anyways. So it kind of works and it's really, really, it feels like a relic. It feels like you pull like a chalice out of the dirt, but uh, the chalice is frog vocals and like pop punk riffs. All right, next we're going to cover an album by a band called Ross Dorchester. This is called Die Sonne und der Monden Ketten. A lot of German releases today. So this album is not an NSBM band, but one of the members here, I believe... Um, I don't think he was in Eisenwinter, but he was in like a different band that we're going to talk about. And that guy is NSBM. So, I mean, I guess at that point, that's where your, your morals lie. I mean, that's, I wouldn't buy it, but for more reasons than just that, because it's actually not that great. This is probably the most brittle guitar tone of this whole chart here. It literally feels like you can pierce through it with your fingernails. It is occasionally grim feeling, which I do like. The bass work on this album does kind of suck, but I mean, black metal was never known for its bass work. It's highly inconsistent, but there are certainly some bangers here. Track six is a really good one, as well as track eight, which is just really a straightforward banger. And uh, the track nine is five minutes long, which on this anime riff chart feels literally like an opus, like an epic song. Um, and it is pretty epic. You know, it's fun. Uh, good riffs, great atmosphere all around. Uh, this album, I give a good, kind of comfortable giving it a good. It's not quite great. 
but you know, I mean, things are looking up from Eisenwinter's other material. I mean, except this is Ross Dorchester. But now we go into the Riff Machine himself, the true werewolf with CNN0373. So this is a uh, werewolf is the guy from Satanic War Master. And if you don't know, Satanic War Master is like one of the best black metal bands ever. Th their riffs are so ridiculously good. It's like not even funny. It has that sort of NSBM style that Drowning the Light has, which when you have NSBM, it goes, there are clearly a few styles that it goes for. It goes the really pagan style or the pop punk style or the DSBM style that Drowning the Light does where they're totally comfortable with a 20 minute ambient track just because it will um, just really intensify the depressing feelings. But this is an EP um, and it's not one that's too easy to find. And it is not Satanic Warmaster's best material, even though it's technically not even Satanic Warmaster. It is kind of overly triumphant sounding on this thing, especially the track 0373. I don't even know what that means, but it sounds like kind of cheesy, to be honest. And it is lightly symphonic. There are little bits of symphonic edges here and there, which is not my favorite thing, but I can't be too mad at it. Also, this thing is so hard to find. There's nowhere you can just click and listen to it. So, I mean, I can't really encourage a listen to it even because honestly, it's just okay. So, I mean, check out Satanic War Master's other material. His albums are actually quite fantastic. Find it from a private seller, uh, please. I hope I get called out by some black metal cult head. I'm looking out for the cult people in black metal. I don't like any of the R.A.B.M. that's spammed on Twitter. Um, that one, like, communist album from, like, last year where it was, like, oh, my gosh, it's the snowiest raw thing. Anytime I hear an R.A.B.M. album and it's, like, raw, it feels so fake. Like, Goods for Lat that had an album this year. I was, like, this feels so disingenuous. So don't come at me with R.A.B.M. Uh, I mean, there's a, there's a couple good R.A.B.M. albums out there, but I'm not going to really say they're all that good. And next we have a split EP right here. This is a Phantom Spire and Haunta Fairy, I believe, with Black Spells over Wallachia. This is the one I was mentioning before that is certainly not NSBM, really just like California style stuff, which is why it's so pop punk feeling, which is kind of hilarious. But what you do get here is a pretty fun release. The uh, Haunta Fairy side is a lot more dungeon synth, um, but it's, it's kind of cool dungeon synth at that. So Phantom Spire is the black metal side here that is super raw. Literally, some elements of this album are literally inaudible due to Phantom Spire's production value. There are some awesome symphonic bits, some of my favorite symphonic bits I've heard in black metal, and the riffs are honestly pretty interesting. The concept of the anime riff does really come through here on the sort of vampiric style. The song Black Ophanim, my notes are bad, uh, it has a dope riff. So if you want a good riff, check that track out. The dungeon synth side uh, is very silly. It's like dun it's like danceable dungeon synth. That's not really my thing. When I look for dungeon synth, I want something that uh, makes me want to reconsider my life choices, which dungeon synth tends to do normally due to a lack of quality. But um, it's not my favorite side. I do recommend the Phantom Spire side though. So overall, I do give this thing a good. It certainly is a bit cheesy, but I'm not gonna say I hate it. Next, we're gonna talk about something I forgot to talk about. This is Total Vernictung Ritual Moral. Legender. Uh, it's 38 minutes, and and most of these songs are 3 to 4 minutes, so you have actually a pretty lengthy track list here. So you get a very raw NSBM style that is triumphant and has riffs for days, but you're going to notice this quickly wears thin because all the ideas are really jam-packed in the first couple tracks here. The vocals are pretty unique though. They're, they have the, this deep growling style that you don't really hear that much. It is pretty repetitive. Oftentimes it is great, but it just kind of falls flat on most of these songs, to be honest. I do think the last track is very solid, but the tempo of this whole thing is really bogged down by the repetitive nature of this album. That's why you have like Eisenwinter's album that I talked about that I said was great, was good, because it really kept up the pacing and was only like 20 minutes long. So you can really just punch as fast as possible and then you're done. But this one here, um, it's just it just kind of lacks the pacing. It lacks the riffing. Um, it doesn't have the longevity that the other albums do here, so I do give it an okay. But I will say that the first and last song are great, so if you want to just pick and choose those two, those are the best ones by far. And next, we're covering a single for some reason. This band, I think I actually don't even know if they're NSBM, but I mean, you have no reason to check them out because this song's bad. But it's Seelen Vilholinen with Asine Nostalgia? I don't know. It's a single. It's three minutes long. Apparently, it's not NSBM. It feels very Celtic and pagan, so if you're cringe, you'll love it. Uh, the lead guitar here sucks. No riffs. 
the rhythm guitar has a decent riff that it kind of keeps up the whole time. Uh, and it has a, a fine tone as well, but it doesn't really ignore from the fact that the vocals and the lead guitar don't do the much. Also, the drumming is especially flat. So I give this thing a pour. I talked about it for almost as long as the song plays because it's only three minutes long, but you could ignore it. And finally today, we well, are talking about something that took me by storm when I first had it. This is a band that is the most infamous I'm going to be covering today by far um, because while technically they're not NSBM, they are allied with a lot of NSBM bands. And you're probably like, oh, well, you know, it's not a huge deal. You know, Migwa did that at one point and people can forgive them because, you know, they're not NSBM. Uh, but they do harbor a lot of these beliefs. But from Japan, because this is Reek of the Unzen Gas Fumes self-titled album. Now, this is the most different album on here because it is not really the anime riffs anymore. I mean, it's Japanese. It's a Japanese album. And the riffs kind of range, but they're never really as bright as on any of these other albums, particularly like your Eyes and Winters or whatever. But the thing about Reek of the Unzen Gas Fumes, this is an album that is entirely recycled material from previous demos and singles and splits that the album, that the band has done before. And the reviews of it online are trashing the hell out of it. Um, on Rate Your Music, on Encyclopedia Metallum. They don't like it at all. Here's the thing. This thing is a blackened grindcore masterpiece. Genuinely one of the best things I've heard this year. The combination of the real blast beats in tandem with the electronic snare sound that hits you as hard as a truck is literally undeniable. The, the genius of this blackened grindcore combination, which is like the best combo genre out there right now by the way because literally like who even fails with this in their repertoire you know you've got the riffing style black metal the atmosphere and the passion from grindcore if you don't get the passion in your black metal i don't want to hear it death metal you could be as flavorless as you want as long as you got some decent riffs and you're talking about killing babies or whatever but black metal i want to hear some real passion i want you to have something to complain about so basically this is like peste noir if they were grindcore also a ton of death metal influence and also, it feels like you could throw in some Atari Teenage Riot, just because. Uh, riff City, riffs for eons, riffs for years, so many good riffs. It's a 30-minute album with about 12 songs. You know, it's a bit short, but it's very fast. And this thing is so fast and so loud and so aggressive, I literally felt exhausted by the time I finished it. And I'm a guy who has a terrible sleep schedule and I can't even get to bed on time. So this was at like 9 p.m., and I didn't even take melatonin or anything, and my body's just ready to give up. Sure, it is a lo-fi, but it also sounds sick. It's also apparently an upgraded version of a lot of the other tracks uh, from the other Reek of the Uns and Gas Fumes releases that I've kind of poked at a little bit here and there. Which, you know, if you, if you would rather hear just the original versions, I mean, sure, dish out all that money to listen to the random garbage power electronics and nsbm bands that are there are splits with for this band but you know the, this is like a greatest hits release and you know it's the first full length the only full length that reek of the unzen gas fumes has and it's a force it's a powerful uh tr mac truck hitting you at 100 miles per hour there's so much happening in half an hour it's so intense you know i mean i i, I give this thing a great you know i don't i don't know if there's a doubt in your mind but yeah, that's the uh, chart. So if you were on Mew about a year ago and you were like, I wonder what this thing is about. There you go. It kind of sucks. Fun gimmick, I guess. I could do without this much NSBM, but you know, that's uh. I can't stop you from making a chart. Um, that's about it. Hope you guys are doing well out there. Check out my social media in the description. Comments, questions, and concerns down below. I'd appreciate a like and a subscribe. You know, helps me out. I'm trying to get big if I can. You know, I would love to do this forever and ever and ever. And, uh, you know, that's uh, about it. Hope you guys are doing well. Have a good day.